Hello and welcome to the fourth and final part of the Project Free Jazz tutorial. Um, in, this, in this part we will uh, add some organization to our music, add some structure to it, and we will uh, uh, hear the final result in fact. In the previous part uh, we, developed a kind, we developed all kinds of structures, uh, very textures I mean. Um, so we've developed this slow piano, fast piano, we discussed a bit how they work and what they did and why they sound the way they sound. Um, and in, in order to get an idea of how they sound we also st uh, started to play them and we used P-par to play patterns in parallel and PT-par to play parallels, uh, patterns in parallel with a time delay. That worked well enough for our purpose back then, but I'm looking to do something a little more advanced today in terms of scheduling, and for that I will use uh, a new class which is called SC Timeline. Now, SC Timeline is not really a standard uh, class in Super Collider, it's something that I just created for these tutorials, um, and I, I I fully intend to be to keep on using it beyond this uh, tutorial. Um, so what does it do? It really will allow us to say for each pattern when to start it and also when to stop it. So it's a kind of timeline. If you remember before we in, in when we developed our textures we always kept asking for infinitely many values and we had to stop the system by hand. Of course I don't want to do that in a real piece of music. So I wanted to have a way to flexibly change the amount of time for which a pattern runs. And uh, so that's why I built the, the timeline. So what can I do? I can uh, call this schedule beat and then it takes a start beat and a stop beat and a pattern name. And then you can also assign a name. This is the name of a track uh, in, in which which we will use in the timeline and you can also assign a color now these last two things will be useful for when we call the plot method because not only can this timeline schedule patterns it can also it has a rudimentary way of visualizing this, the timeline and then it can also play the, the, the patterns the, the full timeline in fact so here I said that from beats 0 to 60 I want to hear slow piano and then again from beat 90 to 182 I want to again hear slow piano. From beat 20 to 182 I want to hear fast piano. So as you can see this there will be overlap between slow piano and fast piano. But because this is quite difficult to, to visualize let's uh, await the results of this plot here. Here I have a call to a different API um, schedule beat number. What will that do? It takes a start beat and then a number of events that the pattern can produce. And the pattern that I'm calling is something the result of calling a function new tempo with the arguments uh, tempo clock tempo times 0 0.9 so what is happening here I decided that so I don't want to start all the patterns simultaneously because then you have no buildup of your music into a climax and also I decided that I wanted to have a way to properly end the piece and a possible uh, way to to make it clear to your listener that the piece is about to end is to have um, all instruments slowing down uh, simultaneously until we hit the final tempo and finally a, f a full stop. At the very end of the timeline I, uh, I have uh, a kind of symbol, I call it a gong but <laughs> in fact it's a symbol uh, scheduled that will really uh, finalize the piece always in the same manner. How do we do this uh, this slowdown? I created a new function called new tempo which will manipulate the tempo clock and tempo clock uh, is how you can change tempo in uh, Super Collider. We've discussed this before 
Um, so the tempo clock is created near the top of the code. So tempo clock, it's a uh, tempo clock is the class, and then I set it to beats per minute over 60, and beats per minute I've set to uh, 60. Um, a new tempo is a function, so these uh, curly brackets indicate a function, which takes one argument, and that's a tempo value. And when it when you call the function, the function will calculate and return a p bind, so a new pattern. But this time, it's not a p bind of type MIDI. It's just a p bind that we will use to change some property, and so we use a type called set. The advantage of these type dot set is that it will not try to produce any sound when you play the events that come out of the p bind. And I here use something, uh, just a, a random key that I named myself, my key, and it it does a p func which we've seen before, so it will evaluate the function, um, and the function will change the tempo clock tempo based on the argument it receives, and it will also debug the new tempo value to the post window. Um, now, every, every time you make a P bind, you can always use whatever key you like, and every key you specify will be evaluated when uh, P bind is asked to produce the next event. So, this is what I'm using here. I, I just named this key randomly, just not something that is equal to the built in uh, standard keys in a P bind that have, that, that have a predefined meaning. And then I could use it to to run my own function. Now to avoid that this new tempo keeps on uh, running all the time, I've used this schedule beat number, which ensures that uh, it, the start beat and that it will produce only one event and then will uh, force the pattern to stop. So new tempo uh, will uh, evaluate this p func and even though this p func does not uh, return nil, for example, so in principle it would always keep on running from the moment you start it, because of this scheduled beat number, which allows only one event to be produced, uh, the p bind will only run once. Of course, because the the tempo is slowing down, a beat here, so between 180 and 181, will take a longer time than, for example, here between 176 and 177. So let's see what our timeline looks like and listen to it. No, we will not listen to it just yet. Just first look at it. Uh, but this is what it looks like. This is immediately much clearer. You have piano slow here, which starts at zero and runs until 60, and then it stops for a while and it starts again. Well, I don't know, around uh, 90, let's see, yeah, 90, so around 90 it starts again until 182. The piano fast texture that we also developed last time uh, will start a bit later, so we get a kind of build-up in the music every time new, st new stuff appears. Uh, once in a while some stuff stops temporarily and then later it starts again. Here we have the brass that starts together with the percussion, uh, also at 90, at 90 I think, but no, yes at 90. And then, a bit later I start a second instance of brass, which you see here, so from 130 to 182 I start a second instance of brass. Uh, and then even a bit later I start even a third instance of brass. Here you can see the tempo slowdown events that we scheduled, and here we have the, the final symbol that will really signify the end of the piece. Um, now, with all this in place, let's have a look or a listen to the final result of our tutorial.
That concludes the result of our first tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you back for more tutorials about different subjects, well also algorithmic composition but uh, not free jazz. Um, and see you then. If you enjoy these tutorials be sure to like and subscribe and do whatever it takes to make this channel grow. Um, so thank you for your attention and bye.